Hey guys, what's up? Manny from Vegan Rock Climbing here. Welcome back to another training episode. Today's topic, power endurance. This video is going to be composed of two parts. First, I'm going to talk about power endurance in general. Why do we need it as climbers and what are the physiological basics behind it? Just a little bit of storytelling as usual. And after that, I'm going to show you a textbook example of a power endurance route in order to discuss typical characteristics of power endurance problems. All right, let's get started. So what is power endurance? I would describe it that way. Power endurance is the ability to perform a number of quite hard moves back to back without resting, without the possibility to rest. And obviously this is quite important for us climbers, especially for roots, but also sometimes for harder, for longer boulder problems, for example. From a physiological point of view, power endurance becomes important when aerobic exercise becomes anaerobic exercise due to an increase of exercise intensity. So what does that mean? Um, if the exercise intensity is relatively low, your muscles manage to cover their energy demands solely from oxidation of glucose, actually of a compound called pyruvate, oxidation of pyruvate, which is a derivative of glucose that gets produced during glycolysis. You have to keep in mind that all the metabolic pathways that exist for energy creation have their advantages and disadvantages. That's why there are so many of them, because that way the body can pick certain proportions of each in order to create, or in order to meet its needs, if that makes sense. And the big advantage of the aerobic breakdown of pyruvate is that it's so efficient. Um, meaning that all the carbs, all the original carbs, you know, you have to remember pyruvate comes from glucose, glucose comes from muscle glycogen, and muscle glycogen of course comes from the carbs you eat. All these original carbs get burnt down to CO2 and water, releasing energy during the process and producing almost no waste products. And this energy of course then can be used to create ATP and ATP in turn can be used to fuel muscle fiber contractions and a whole lot of other stuff. However, the big disadvantage of the aerobic breakdown of pyruvate is that it is relatively slow. Um, at higher intensity exercise, when muscle contractions need to be performed more rapidly and faster, the aerobic pathway simply cannot keep up with the energy needs. And this is why the body had to invent another pathway in order to squeeze energy out of glucose faster. That one is called the anaerobic glycolysis. Here the pyruvate gets rather fermented than oxidized. It has two major advantages, first it's extremely fast and secondly it doesn't even require oxygen. But of course, as always, the disadvantages are there and they are crucial in my opinion. First, it's extremely inefficient. Just to illustrate that, one molecule of glucose can produce between 36 and 38 molecules of ATP when it's burned aerobically with oxygen, but only two molecules of ATP when it's processed anaerobically. And secondly, we are producing a very inconvenient byproduct here, a chemical called lactic acid. And this one accumulates in your muscles and it's suggested to produce the pump that we all know as climbers. So it seems like we are moving into a more climbing related direction here with this talk. Anyway, um, however, to complete the story here. Lactic acid has to be transported from your muscles to your liver where it can be by the bloodstream of course, where it can be converted into um, glucose again. So as you can see, this recycling process tries to attenuate the inefficiency of the anaerobic glycolysis a little bit, but however, this takes a lot of time again, and it takes a lot of energy investment as well. So it's uh, compared to the aerobic pathway, it's still very inefficient. Alright, so now that we understand the physiological basics, how is this related to power endurance and climbing? Well, when we have to perform a lot of quite hard, powerful moves without resting, back to back, we are um, shutting down blood flow to our forearms. Why? For two reasons. The first one, the more important one in my opinion, being that to a contracted muscle, the blood flow is very limited. 
simply because um, the muscle itself compresses the capillaries, the arteries, um, your blood vessels and there is no more room for blood transport. The second reason being, especially when climbing a lot, when we're doing a lot of moves without shaking out, without resting, then we are pointing upwards with our arms all the time, which means that our blood has to fight against gravity when it wants to go through your muscles. And this, this all leads to a very low amount of blood in your forearm muscles. At the same time, these forearm muscles have to perform a lot of rapid contractions, fast contractions when we are reaching for new holds, you know, when we are grabbing new holds, when we are crimping those tiny edges. This is all very exhausting for our muscles. It needs energy. At the same time, there is no oxygen, no blood. As you can see, we are kicking, we are literally kicking our muscles into the anaerobic mode here. We will produce shitloads of lactic acid in our forearms. It will accumulate because it can't be transported away as there is no blood flow. And as a consequence, we are going to get pumped. This leads to an even harder forearm muscles and even lower blood flow. And we are going to get more and more pumped and more and more pumped and finally we will fall off. Now, of course, this depends on the fitness of the athlete. A route which might be completely bouldery for one climber can be just a nice power endurance piece for another climber or, or even just a warm-up shake through for another even stronger climber. Strong climbers can shake out between the moves, you know, they have a lot of blood flow in their forearms, which means that they don't even um, get out of the aerobic zone here. Alright, I'm going to move on to the next part of this video now, the textbook example of a power endurance climb. Therefore, I picked a climb called Sarau Nocturne, in which I climbed in Margalef, it's an 8A. Very short, very, very, very steep, um, only consisting of 18 moves and the whole ascent doesn't take longer than 2 minutes, I think it was even under 2 minutes. And the 10th move is the crux and yeah, it's power endurance from the beginning, let's take a look. Experienced climbers will recognize the shape of this route quite fast. It's very steep already at the beginning and it's getting less and less steep as we are moving to the top. And the first moves right away are quite hard because you're starting off in a complete roof and you have to do a bit of clipping there and yeah, maybe a little bit of chalking up and stuff because you still want to have a little bit of chalk on your hands for the crux. And as in all power endurance routes like that, you really have to sprint through it, you know? Once you make the first move, you're in a sprint situation. You just want to get it done as fast as possible. You don't want to waste any second. You just have a couple of seconds left until you pump out of it. And yeah, nice dyno here. And what you can notice instantly when you're in the power endurance route, the clipping is very, very exhausting. You have to find really good clipping positions because there is no good hold. Now we are preparing for the crux move. Very hard with the pump. Boom. Nice, come on. Clipping and chalking up is a real problem in a power endurance test piece because you have no good holds, you know. Here is a little shake out up the crux and then you basically have to go through until you reach the top. You know, you don't have a no hands rest or I don't know, a complete shake out or something like that, which you have in other, other endurance routes a lot, of course. But here it's very steep and even if the pockets get better, you're completely exhausting your shoulders and all of your other stuff when you, when you would decide to rest here. Okay, so basically you have to fight through it. Here, another crux to the top. Which can be a heartbreaker if you don't check it out, if you didn't check it out properly. But yeah, that's power endurance. You have to sprint from the beginning, sprint through the crux from the beginning. You know, the crux move here is the tenth move, and you have basically no chance to shake out or um, chalk or chalk up or whatsoever. You just have to clip your draws because you don't want it to get too dangerous, of course. And <clears throat> apart from that. You just have to go through it. You just have to run through this thing. And yeah, that's it for this episode, I would say. I hope I, I hope you got something out of it. 
and I'm planning to do a second video because in this one I only show you what is the physiological basics basically and uh, what is the textbook example but I also plan to do a video on how to train it, how to train the power endurance and that one should come out I think somewhere at the end of this week or maybe at the beginning of next week, I don't know. Stay tuned for that one. And as always, like the video if you like it. Um, I hope you got something out of it. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.